morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, out of voice radio. And what I want to do is talk today not about a particular winning deck list, but a deck idea that just might be absolutely amazing when we get our next set. Now, the weird thing is, it actually came out of a Japanese stream over on the Japanese YouTube channel, which is not usually known for their groundbreaking deck lists. But what happened was that Ponytar Ishii, the host of the channel, played a game against a fan, and the agreement was that if the fan won, a new card would be revealed. The fan lost. And they did actually kind of tease the card behind an Aurora energy, and we got a quick sneak peek at the border, showing that it was a Pokemon V card that we didn't get to see because Ponytar won, which is sad, but the deck with which he won was kind of awesome. It was Arceus and Dialga and Palkia with Altaria. What would be like a full-on dragon deck if it wasn't for the whole dragon decks not really existing anymore. But, you know, more about that another time. Now, Altaria probably is the most exciting part of this. This is a new card we showed you the other day. We looked at the other day. And the Altaria is the one that's got the ability that prevents all damage done by Pokemon GX and Pokemon V. It is, in fact, the exact same ability that we see on Decidueye. Except Decidueye is a stage 2. And has a retreat cost of 2. Rather than being a stage 1 with a retreat cost of 1. So where does Arceus and Dialga and Palkia come into it then? And that comes into it for two reasons. Now firstly we've got Altered Creation GX. And I'm not going to pretend for a second like we're not talking Altered Creation GX. Altered Creation GX is a rather lovely ability. Or attack really. Whereby for the rest of the game, if you've got a metal and a water attached when you do it, for the rest of the game, all of your attacks do an extra 30 damage and you take an extra prize. And that opens up a bunch of dimensions in this deck, probably more so than we see in other decks playing ADP. We then have the other attack, and this is actually a really, really nice attack right now. Because what it does for free energy, so you essentially add one more energy on after using Altered Creation. You use Ultimate Ray, 150 damage, and you search your deck for up to three basic energy cards and attach them to your Pokemon in any way that you like. And what I really love about the combination of Altaria and ADP, or one of the many things I love is that you can stall with Altaria while you wait to get ADP rolling. So you can basically buy yourself time. One of the issues with using ADP has been for a while, well, since it came out, that we don't really have any great energy acceleration. We've seen it with stuff like Metal Saucer slash Zashian's ability, both of which can accelerate metal energy, and then using energy switch to get the energy onto ADP. And then just attaching a water from your hand. But what this does, it basically buys you time. You pop an Altaria in the active and against a GX heavy deck, you're going to be able to buy yourself several turns of just, you know what? I can block you until ADP is ready. Now, of course, one of the things to point out about Altaria you can basically just sit there for the entire game. Like, literally the entire game. Because if they don't have a good answer, you never put ADP out. You just sit there and roll behind Altaria. But essentially, by the time your opponent brings up an answer to Altaria, you've got ADP up and rolling and raring to go. But then we've got the energy acceleration side of it. And the other Pokemon, and I want to take the... In in exact deck list. I don't think it's about taking the exact deck list. I think this is more an archetype we can kind of take and run with. But the other card that we saw in the deck that really interested me was Amazing Rare Jirachi. Now this has got the ability that lets you look at the top two cards of your deck, put one in your hand and the other back on top of your deck. So you can use stuff like Scoop Up Net and Switch and all of that to get multiple Jirachis in and out of the active using this ability multiple times. 
and then getting set up basically but it's also got the attack now generally speaking the attack is too awkward one psychic one fighting one metal energy search your deck for seven basic energy and attach him to your pokemon in any way that you like and most of the time i look at amazing red jirachi and i go eh. I've got to put free energy on to accelerate seven energy and it's only really four extra time that you take out the free you've put on Jirachi and it just gets kind of super awkward. Except now it becomes significantly easier because you use ADP to get the free energy on Jirachi and then you use Jirachi to get seven energy on the field. And you don't really care about giving up one prize with Jirachi given that you are blocking and making life really difficult for your opponent because you're using Altaria. And it's the combination of these three cards that really, really gets me going and kind of gets the cogs turning here. Makes me start thinking about all the fun things that we can do with this. Because let's say you've got something like Spiritu. Initially, Spiritu might seem like a fairly bad matchup for this. Because Spiritum can just start running through Altarias like their paper, because Spiritum's one energy basic Pokemon, fairly easy KO. But Altaria should KO Spiritomb. So what you can essentially do is go down a couple prizes and it doesn't really matter. Now Spiritomb in the early game really struggles to get a KO on Arcus and Alga and Palkia. Maybe you're going to want to build in some healing here, a couple of great potions or whatever, to try and make sure that they're not getting an easy two hit KO. But they're not hitting for weakness, the damage output isn't enough. Spiritomb really struggles trying to get a KO on ADP. And once you've used your GX attack, then all of a sudden Altaria comes in and starts rolling. Let's say Spiritomb KOs Arcus and Alga and Palkia. They go down to three prizes remaining. You get a KO, you're down to four. They get a KO, they're down to two. You get a KO, you're down to two. They get a KO, they're down to one. You take your last two prizes and win. Even if they KO Arcus and Alga and Palkia before you take a KO... You still win the prize race by using Altaria here. And incidentally, I know we're talking about accelerating energy with ADP and we're talking about accelerating energy with Jirachi. These are all nice options, but you can just use twin energy here if you'd rather. And this is kind of where I'm going with this. One of my biggest issues with Altaria is that you struggle a bit too much against single prize decks that you're not blocking but adp does two things beautifully either it gives you an attack that does 150 while accelerating energy which of course will ko the vast majority of pokemon that can attack spiritomb and it means you take an extra prize every time you do take a KO with Altaria, meaning that you can even up the prize race. If they're one hit KOing Altaria and Altaria's two hit KOing them, but taking two prizes at the same time, you're not really going behind here. And the reason why this deck excites me so much is because I look at ADP and it starts to fix all of the problems that Altaria seemingly had. And then, of course, we get to my personal reason why this is so exciting. You can put anything into this deck. Because you can use a combination of Arcus and Alga and Palkia and Jirachi Amazing Rare, you can play the dumbest, stupidest, most expensive tech Pokemon around and just not care about what ridiculous energy cost they might have. Because you can accelerate seven energy. Essentially, you get three on two Jirachi, but then Jirachi will get seven out. So, oh, I'm worried about Eternatus VMAX. I think Eternatus VMAX is going to be a bad matchup, and I'm worried I'm not going to be able to take it down, etc. All of a sudden, that free energy on Sandaconda really doesn't seem like such a big deal. Because you're accelerating 7 energy, that is less than half. 
But maybe you don't want to use something that's giving up two prizes. Maybe you'd rather use some kind of big basic fighting Pokemon. Maybe you accept that you're playing a stage one and you go for Galarian Surfetched. And you can basically play this game with whatever you like. And that's why it's so cool. Oh no, I am actually worried about my opponent's Arcus and Alga and Palkia. How am I ever going to cope? Just play some kind of fairy Pokemon. They've not all been rotated yet. So there are going to be some fairy Pokemon around that you can use. Maybe you want to go for Gardevoir and Sylveon. And actually you just put six fairy energy on there. And do 200 damage and make your opponent shuffle their entire hand back into their deck. I'm not saying that these are necessarily the best options. I am just pointing out some of the ridiculous things you can do with this. And I'm telling you why this excites me quite as much as it does. You've got pretty much an auto win over any GX or V heavy deck purely by virtue of playing Altaria. You've got an option for taking out those single prize decks that Altaria would usually be lacking. And you've got the ability and the option to tech in basically any Pokemon you like whatsoever to cover any bad matchup you like. And all of a sudden, this is a kind of deck that speaks to me. I think this is a kind of deck where putting together the optimal deck list will firstly take an extremely long time. And secondly, very wildly tournament to tournament, as you're trying to figure out exactly what the metagame is at any one particular moment. But I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen... It is rare that I'm excited this much about a deck. This is a deck with ADP, and I literally made a video about how much I dislike ADP. <laughs> and yeah, I'm sitting here talking about ADP like it's the most exciting deck I've ever seen. This one's going to need some testing. Along similar lines, ladies and gentlemen, I would also really like to know... Genuinely, what are you putting in here? What do you want to put in this deck? What cards would you want to tech in with this? Do you think it's going to work or do you think it's overblown? Go nuts in the comment section, but be nice! And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcg radio if you want to support the channel get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff head on over to patreon.com slash ptcg radio where you can do exactly that but by far the most important thing as always look after yourselves till next time would you thank you very much for watching my name's ross and you've been watching ptcg radio